In this sicha, we're going to be learning about two different ways of looking at the melach of oichel nefesh. That's permitted to do on Yom Tif, as opposed to the other melachas which were not allowed to do on Yom Tif. Whether melachas oichel nefesh is something that's completely out of the category of melacha that we're not allowed to do on Yom Tif, meaning melachas oichel nefesh was in the first place never part of the prohibition of melacha on Yom Tif, or is it Torah is giving us a special allowance within the malachis that we're not allowed to do? The Torah comes along and tells us that there are certain malachis that we're going to be permitted to do, as we'll see in the Sikha. So the Rebbe starts off the Sikha by saying that it says in the Parsha, in connection to Chag Pesach, on the first day of Pesach is a day of holiness, on the seventh day, etc. And call malachal ayayosavahem, and no malach is allowed to be done on the days of Yom Tov. Then the pasta goes on and say, says, nefesh, but that which is needed for food, hu lachem, that is permitted to be done on Yom Tov. That means that Yom Tov, you're not allowed to do malacha just like Shabbos, besides for those malachas that are related to the need for oichel nefesh for food, which are allowed to be done on Yom Tov. This isur of doing malacha on Yom Tov is repeated a number of times in the Torah, by every single Yom Tif. Now in all of those, the expression says, Kol Meleches Avoidoloisasu, that's the expression in the Torah. And the Torah does not specify the heter for being allowed to do the Melacha of Oichel Nefesh. We need to understand what's the reason for this. So that Amban explains that when the Torah uses the expression Meleches Avoido by all the other Yom Tovim, that that's what you're not allowed to do on Yom Tif. The Ramban explains the words Meleches Avoida, a work of labor or a work of exertion, means any Melecha that's not related to Oichel Nefesh. And the Ramban brings some proof from that Avoida specifically is related to other types of work. So the Ramban brings the Pasuk Sheshes Yavam Tavoid Sisa Kol Melechtecha. So all Melecha specifically, Meleches Avoida, is specifically referring to other types of work. The Ramban says, we see the Pasuk of Echol Avoida Basode, another Pasuk, Vadatem Vinizratem. These are Melochas that are related to planting and sowing, but not Melochas directly related with the food itself. But then, the Melocha of Oichel Nefesh, Melocha that's related to the food itself, the Ramban calls it Meleches Hanoah. This is a work of enjoyment, of pleasure, not a work of labor, not Melechas Avoida. Says the Ramban, this is what the Torah is saying. On Pesach, when it says, Kol melocha lo that any work shouldn't be done, which is the Pesach in our Parsha, that's why, since it said any work shouldn't be done, that's why the Pesach needed to then go ahead and say, Acha she nefesh, but those Melochas that are related to food, who that's the kind of work that you could do. However, when we come to the other Yom Toivim, the Kaposa could just be brief and say, that which kind of work can't you do? A work of labor, meaning all the Malachos that are not part of Oichel Nefesh. So the Torah doesn't have to tell us anymore in those ones that the Malach of Oichel Nefesh is permitted because it just says Malachas Avoido. Malachas Avoido, we established already, means all other types of work. By the other, by the other Yom Toivim, it doesn't say Kol Melacha, because it doesn't say Kol Melacha, so you don't need to come along and say that the other Melachas are allowed. However, again, by Pesach, since it says Kol Melacha, so therefore it needs to give the heter and say, Nefesh, that which is for food, who The Rebbe explains, from the words of the Ramban, we understand, that the Torah on Yom Tif is only is only answering the Meleches Avoida. In other words, which Meleches are forbidden on Yom Tif is only a Meleches Avoida, a work of labor, meaning works that are nothing related to food, from which we understand that the Meleches that is related to food was L'Chathchila never part of the prohibition because they are not part of Meleches Avoida. So the Rebbe goes on to explain. Generally, when we speak about the heter, the allowance for doing the malacha of Oichel Nefesh, the malacha related to food on Yom Tif, 
Generally, we can understand it in two ways. One way of understanding it is that these malachos on their own inherently would have also been Osir, and they are Osir, because the Pasuk says, Kol melacha loya yasab, you're not supposed to do any work, as the Pasuk in our Parsha. However, if it's done for Eichel Nefesh, the Torah is then taking it out of the general rule of Kol melacha and saying, in this case, you're going to be allowed to do it. In other words, the fact that you're doing it from Melech HaSoychel Nefesh, this is a reason why we are being permitted, why we're being allowed to do Melech that technically would have been us, but the Torah is giving us a special allowance. Another way of looking at it, and this is the way it seems like the Ramban is learning, that Lechatchila, the Melech of Oichel Nefesh, was never included as part of the Isser Melech. And therefore, the first time the Pasuk says in our parish, that what's needed for food is what you're allowed to do, is coming to teach us the general rule that whenever it's going to say later in the Torah, don't do any work. Sorry, not the rest of the Torah. Back in this part, parsh, in Parsha, when it says first, when it said you shouldn't do any work, the Pasuk is explaining to us that we're only speaking about food that's not related to Eichel Nefesh. And therefore, when it says, nefesh, that's what you're allowed to do, that's not necessarily the reason why you're allowed to do it. Rather, that's the way the Torah is giving us a sign. Torah is giving us how do we, how do we define which Malachis are never part of the Isur. The Torah is giving us a rule. Anything that's going to be related to food, these are the things that are not part of the Isur from the outset. What would be the practical difference, whether, again, whether it's L'Chathchila, part of the Isur, and you're just giving an allowance because it's being done for food, you're going to be allowed to do it. Or are we saying that it was just a sign which Malachis are completely not Isur from the outset? And these Malachis of Eichel Nefesh have nothing to do with the Isur. The practical difference would be if a person is actually not going to be eating. So if a person is fasting on Yom Tov. So Min HaToyra, would he be allowed to be involved in Malacha of Eichel Nefesh? If we say that these are Malachas that generally are part of the category of Malachas that are also that are forbidden. It's just there was a reason given when it's for Eichel Nefesh you're going to be allowed to do it. So obviously this wouldn't apply to someone that's not eating on Yom Tif, someone that's fasting on Yom Tif. Since he has no need to eat, so therefore these malachis remained also for him because the whole malacha was only for someone that's going to eat. Whereas according to the Savara to say that these malachis were never part of the Isser. From the outset, in other words, these are malachis that have, are completely, completely permitted to do on Yom Tif. Not that the Torah gave us a special allowance, but that these malachis were never part of any Isser at all. So even if someone's fasting, technically for him, it's let's call it like a middle of the week. In other words, there's no Isser to start with on these malachis at all. So even if he's not eating, he could still do these malachis. Says the Rebbe, L'cha'oyra, we could say that this actually, these two ways of looking at it, would be the machloikas between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel in Mesech de Beitza. Now the Rebbe starts off over here saying, L'cha'oyra yesh loymar, because in the initial part of the Sikha, the Rebbe is going to very strongly want to say that Beis Shammai is one and Beis Hillel is the other. But later we're going to see that at least according to the opinion of Toisvis, eventually in the Sikha, the Rebbe is going to want to learn that even Beis Hillel would agree to the general, um, to the opinion that we're first going to say is Beis Shammai, as we'll see in a minute. So the, the Mishnah says as follows, Beis Shammai says, you're not allowed to carry out things other than food on Shabbos. So you're not allowed to carry out a child on Shabbos. There's other examples in the Gemara over there, whether it's a lulav or other things, or a shus harabim. Beis Hillel says you're allowed. What's the reason for this machloikas? So the Gemara explains that the reason for the machloikas is whether we say the concept of mitoich shehutro do we say that since these malachis were made permissible for a particular need, the need of Eichel Nefesh, so automatically we are also allowed to do one so it's allowed or ready for Eichel Nefesh, we're also going to be allowed to do it even if it's for other purposes. 
So going back to this example for a moment, since I'm allowed to carry out for the sake of food, I'm also allowed to carry out other things, a child or a lulav and so on. That's the opinion of Beis Hillel. And Beis Shammai disagrees that you're not allowed. What is this machloikis hinging upon? So l'cha'ayla, we could say, simply, we could say the idea that we were discussing before. That Beis Hillel holds that when it says, that are things that are uh, for food, you're allowed to do on Yom Tev. That means these malachas of, of Eichel Nefesh were completely taken out of any category of Isur of Malacha on Yom Tev. And therefore, you're completely, completely allowed to do them even if they're not for the sake of eating. Whereas Beis Shammai says, no, Asher Yochel Luchol Nefesh is a reason the Torah is giving you why you would be allowed to do this. But it doesn't mean that these malachas were completely taken out of the category that from now on, they're not usher at all. And therefore, in other words, the Torah is only permitting it when you are doing it for Eichel Nefesh. But if it's not for Eichel Nefesh, then they're still going to be usher. And that's the Svar of Beishamai. So now the, Alter, the Rebbe is going to look at a lotion of the Alter Rebbe. And just from the begin, right, from the, right from the outset, I just want to point out that the Rebbe is going to look at the Alter Rebbe and it's going to seem like the Alter Rebbe is sort of jumping and saying both things. On the one hand, it's going to seem to be that the Alter Rebbe is going to say that food, malachis, are completely not part of the Isra at all. And then it's going to seem that the Alter Rebbe is saying, no, they are part of the Isra, but the Torah gave us a special allowance for it. So let's see the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe writes that the first and seventh days of Pesach, the Yom Tov of Shavuos, etc., all the Yom Tovim, they're called Yom Tovim, and anybody that does, Meleches Avoida, anybody that does work in any of them, gets Malkus Minat Torah, as the Pesach says, called Meleches Avoida, any work of labor should not be done. Says the Alter Rebbe, what is considered Meleches Avoida? Any Melacha that's not done with food or drinks, etc., However, malachas that are done with foods and drinks and so on, these kind of malachas, they are called malachas oichal nefesh. Which the Torah was matir. The Torah allowed us to do it for the sake of, uh, of eating on Yom Tif, As the Pasuk says, Ach asher yeyoche luchol nefesh, hu levade yeyoso lachem. So what's the Alter Rebbe saying? From the beginning of the words of the Alter Rebbe, when the Alter Rebbe says, what's considered Malacha Savoida? Any Malacha that's not done with food and drink. It sounds like what the Ramban said, that Malacha Savoida means a Malacha that's not for the sake of Eichel Nefesh, and therefore the Malachas that are related to food are just completely, completely allowed. There was never any Isra on them from the beginning. But then when the Alter Rebbe says that the Torah allowed us, permitted us to do it for the sake of Achilles Yom Tif, it sounds like that these Malachas are part of the Malachas that are Asr on Yom Tif, but the Torah gave us a special allowance in the Pasuk and Pasha's boy for the sake of eating on Yom Tif. In other words, that for the need of Eichel Nefesh, the Torah gave us an allowance to do these Malachas. That means it's a reason why we could do these Malachas. Malachas that are forbidden inherently. So what's the Alter Rebbe saying? He seems to be contradicting himself. Is it? that these Malachis were never part of the Isur, or is the Torah giving us a special hatter to do it in the case of Eichel Nefesh? So now, in order to understand all of this, but initially, actually, the question is going to become even stronger, the Rebbe is first going to look at what Rashi and Toisvis comment on the words of Beis Hillel. So the Rebbe says like this, in explaining what Beis Hillel says, that once you're allowed to do a malacha for the need of Eichel Nefesh, now you're allowed to do the malacha in any case. There's an argument between Rashi and Toisvus. Rashi says, this means that malacha is completely, completely mutar now, even if you have absolutely no need for it. That means midoi raisa, this malacha is mutter 100% completely. You could do this malacha, let's say carrying, let's say lighting a fire. You could do it now for any purpose in the world, even if it's nothing to do with Eichel Nefesh. Rashi says that you would need 
some sort of, do it for some sort of purpose, even if it's not a lepin, but at least some other purpose that you're doing it for, but that's only Midir Abonin. But Midir Araisa, definitely you could do it no matter what. Whereas Toysvus holds that this heter, when we say that Beis Hillel says that you can do it Shaloy Litzoyrech even for no need, what Beis Hillel means is that the Torah would allow you to do it even if there's no need of Oichel Nefesh, but at least there needs to be some sort of benefit that you're going to have on, for, the, for Yom Tif, from these Molochis. That means even Midoi Raisa, the Molocha was not completely, completely Mutar. Rather, there needs to be at least some sort of need that you're going to have from this malacha on this day. So again, using the example, you're going to use the lulav today and so on. Now, based on what we said before, that base Hillel holds that a malacha of Oichel Nefesh was never part of the Isur to start with, and that's why they're saying everything is allowed. So Rashi, we can understand very, very easily. That that's why, everything is going to be allowed, even if there's absolutely no benefit, no use at all whatsoever for the day. However, we need to understand Toysvus. Seemingly, the Rebbe says, Toysvus L'cha'oyre would also hold like Rashi in the way we explained Beis Hillel, that when we speak about the Malachas of Oichel Nefesh, it's not that the Torah is giving us a reason when we are allowed to go ahead and undo the Isur, but rather, seemingly, Toysavus does agree generally with the idea of Rashi, that Beis Hillel is of the opinion that these Molochos are completely, completely mutter. Because if not, then why would it even help if I have some sort of other benefit today out of it? Again, let's use the Lulav as an example. If I'm not using it for Oichel Nefesh Mamesh, if the only thing the Torah is allowing us to do, if the idea of Oichel Nefesh is only a reason that the Torah is telling you, when am I going to be allowed to do it? The reason is if it's for the idea of Oichel Nefesh, but not that inherently these Molochis are not Osur, then why should I be allowed to do this Molochah if it's not related to Oichel Nefesh? So we must say that Toysvus would also hold that when the, that the Molochah of Oichel Nefesh is completely, completely Mutter, in other words, from the outset, never part of the Easter. Seemingly, that's what we have to say. Although, again, later in the Sikha, the Rebbe is going to change that. But if we understand Toysavus in this way, then the question is, if these Molochis are not Osur L'Chathchila, they're completely out of the Easter, right from the outset, then L'Cha'oyre, they should be Mutar, Minat Toyre, that is, even if there's absolutely no need. So in other words, we're trying to understand where is that difference between Rashi and Toysavus. Seemingly, they should both be saying that Beis Hillel Svaro, in saying that you could do Molochis even if they're not for Oichel Nefesh, seemingly the idea being is that these Molochis were never part of the Isur. But if that's the case, then why would Toysavus say you still need to have at least some sort of need for the day? So the Rebbe says to explain this Machloikus on Rashi of Toysavus, we, could tr we try to explain it in the following way. We said earlier in the name of the Ramban that the Malach of Oichel Nefesh are not considered Malachas Avoida, they're not considered Malachas of labor, they're considered Malachas Hano, work of enjoyment. And therefore, they're not part of the Isra of Kol Malachas Avoida Loisasu. But this itself could be explained in two ways. According to Rashi, what this would mean is that the moment a Malacha is, for the need of Oichel Nefesh, then automatically it's put into a totally different category. These types of labor, of work, again, let's just use the examples of carrying outside or lighting a fire. These Malachis became in their very essence by nature. They're inherently right now a different type of Malacha called Malacha Sano. And therefore it makes no difference what the person's intention is. He doesn't have to think about anything specific, why he's doing this malacha, in order to make it into this category called malacha sano. And therefore, it's no difference in the way the person does the malacha, whether he's doing it for his personal pleasure and enjoyment and so on, or he's doing it for something else. Since in essence, these malachis are malacha sano, therefore, they were never part of the category called malacha savoida. And therefore, you could do them no matter what, even if it's for absolutely no need for the day at all. That's Rashi. Whereas Toysavus would hold 
that really these malachis, you can't say that in their very essence there are different types of malachis than the other malachis. Rather, it all depends on how the person is doing it. If you're doing it for your personal pleasure on Yom Tif, the need for food, or some other sort of pleasure on this particular day, then Toysa says, then that, that's when these malachis were not part of what we call Meleches Avoidah, and they would be called the Meleches of Anoah. However, if they're not being done for the day, then they are considered Meleches Avoidah, which would be Asur on Yom Tev, and therefore they would, that's why Toysa holds that there is a need, even in these kind of Meleches, they have some sort of personal benefit out of it today. Or to put it slightly in a different way, Rashi holds that when you say nefesh, that things that are for food, you could do, this is Torah giving us a definition that these kind of malachas that are done for food, they are a special category for itself. They're called malachas because of just the, these malachas themselves, no matter how you do them. Just the act of this malacha now became a different category. It's a different group. On the other hand, Toysvah says, no, when it says achashayi achel, the Torah is telling you of what kind of malachis are going to be out of the Isur is going to depend on the goal, on the purpose of the malachis. That means your kavana and how you're doing them. That if you're doing them for your personal benefit, they're called malachas hanah, and then they were not included in malachas avoida. So in other words, in summary, what the Rebbe is learning so far is, that both Rashi and Toysvus agree in the concept of that Oichel Nefesh is a kind of sign of which kind of Malachis are totally not part of the Isur of Malachas Avoida. Again, the slight difference only would be that according to Rashi, it's no matter how you do these Malachis. According to Toysvus, it's your intention about the Malachis, but both of them in the meantime agree that these malachis are totally not part of the Isra, and not the Torah has to give you a special allowance to do it. But if that's the case, the, the words of the al Rebbe are even more difficult, because it seems to be that even Toysvus is agreeing to this idea that these malachis were never part of the Isur, whereas the al Rebbe in the second part that we quoted before is seeming to say that the Torah just gave us a special allowance, and not that it's not part of the Isur al which is what the al Rebbe seemed to say in the beginning. So from this point on, the Rebbe is going to change and explain Toysvus in the way Toysvus understands Beis Hillel that it's actually the Malachis are Asur by themselves and there's only a certain reason when and how we're going to permit them. But that Toysvus does not agree with this original premise that we said that according to Beis Hillel, these Malachis are just not part of the Isur at all. And this will help us understand the Alter Rebbe. So the Rebbe says in Sif Hay of the Sicha, that we could really explain Toysvus, that even Beis Hillel holds, meaning similar to Beis Shammai in this idea, that the Malachas of Oichel Nefesh are actually just a reason that the Torah is giving us to permit these Malachas. Malachas that are Asur, really, technically on themselves, and the Torah is allowing us to do it in certain times. However, so what's the unique opinion of Beis Hillel then? What is Beis Hillel saying? Beis Hillel is saying is that the kind of heter that we have for the Malachas of Eichel Nefesh is not what we call that the Malachas, not that in this case we're pushing away the Isra of these Malachas, that means because we have a very, very great need and a great, and a great Chshivus over here, for the, and it's so important, the idea of Malachas of Nefesh, so we're pushing off an Isra that, that's, uh, that's something that's also and we're just pushing it aside. And therefore we're going to say, Okay, so we only push it aside as much as we need, only absolutely limited and restricted just for Oichel Nefesh, which would, would have been the opinion of Beis Shammai. Rather, Beis Hillel is saying that because of this need, these Malachos were now given us a complete free license, so to speak, to go ahead and do these Malachos, that now, they're mutter, now they are mutter, but again, it's not the pshat, as we thought originally, that these malachis are not part, malachas oichel nefesh is not part of the Isra at all initially. It's also not like we would say, what the Rebbe is saying is according to Beis Shammai, we would say that the Isra is just being pushed aside and therefore we have to be limited only purely for oichel nefesh. 
But Basilil does agree, according to Tosis, Basilil does agree that the Molochis would have been us or Lechatchila. The Torah was just matir, is allowing us to do it for Eichel Nefesh. But once we're being matir, it's being ma- mutter, in other words, being allowed in a way that's completely mutter, not just the Chuyah, not just being pushed off the Isser, but the Torah is giving us a full allowance. And therefore, we no, don't need to restrict it that the Melechus Eichel Nefesh, for example, needs to be that it's all for eating it today. So just by way of example, um, this is based on the Ha'or over here where the Rebbe is sending us off to. So the Halacha is a woman could, for example, fill up a whole pot of meat, even if she just needs a little bit of the meat today. Even though she's cooking the rest of it, there's no problem. So too, the Rebbe continues in the Sikhi, a lot of Shechta Beheme, even if you only need one little Kazais of its meat. In other words, as long as the Molochah does have some need for Eichel Nefesh, now it became Mutter completely, even if part of it, or even if most of it, is not for the purpose of eating. Says the Rebbe, now we can understand what Beis Hillel says, that the Torah is allowing us to do it even for other kinds of Hanoah, even if it's not for food. Again, we said once we were allowed to do it for the need of Food, we're allowed to do it for other purposes. So the Rebbe explains it in the following way. The, these malachis that we are told that are mutar, even if we're doing them for other purposes of anoah, not directly for food. Again, let's just remind ourselves, for example, you took out the child on Yom Tev, the lulav on Yom Tev, and so on. It still has a certain common denominator with the idea of oichel nefesh. In other words, these are all things that are for the need of the person. And therefore, just like we have regarding food, we said that as long as you have a bit of a need for the food, you could also cook or take out the rest of the food. So too, these general other categories of Hanoah that I have that are not food related at all, they are considered the little bit in other words, the, that little bit compared to the malacha of Eichel Nefesh. In other words, again, we have Eichel Nefesh in the simple sense. So we have food, and we might just need a little bit of the food, and we're being allowed also to do malacha with the rest of the food. That's, that's in the quantity of the food. But the Rebbe is saying, if we're speaking about quality, we would say that all the other Hanois of the Guf, they're also considered like a Miktsas, a kind of Hano, compared to regular food. So therefore, the Rebbe says, since we see that the mullah of these mullahs were allowed for Eichel Nefesh, we were also given the permission to do these other mullahs, just like by food, even if we only needed a little bit. So, so too, it's enough by the other mullahs, as long as we have some need for it. In this case, it would be like the quality. In, it's qua- quali- in other words, speaking, legabe compared to food itself. So these other anois are considered a miktsas hano compared to the Eichel Nefesh itself. And this is what Basil is saying. Since we see that the Torah allowed us for the purpose of Eichel Nefesh, this Molochah is Mutar. In other words, there is a Heter, that the whole Molochah now became Mutar. Meaning to say, just like by the food itself, we said that as long as I need a little bit of the food, or I have some benefit of the food, now all the other types of Hanoah, of the food, all the other Malacha that I'm doing with the food is also allowed. Again, whether it's cooking more, whether it's taking out more, and so on. So the same thing when we speak about other types of Hanoah, since it also has a certain Tzadah Shava, it has a certain similarity to the idea of Eichel Nefesh. Again, it's not the same like Eichel Nefesh, just like the same of the other food that I don't need is not the same like the original food. So therefore, I'm allowed to do that as well. And that's why Toysavus holds in the opinion of Beis Hillel that what's mutter as long as I have some sort of need for it. Just like by the food, I had to have some sort of need for a little bit of food and I'm not being allowed to do with the rest of the food. So to other Hanois, at least I have to have a little bit of Hano, which is then making it similar to this other food that I'm preparing, which was not part of the original food itself, that um, was for the purpose of Hanoa, for the purpose of my eating. Says the Rebbe, based on all of this, we can now explain the words of the Alter Rebbe. 
In other words, based on this that we said, the Beis Hillel is also holding that the Asherei Ochel Ochel Nefesh is only a reason to be matir, these Molochos, but not that these Molochos are completely, were never part of the category of Isra Lechatchila. So we're going to understand now the words of the Alter Rebbe, but first the Rebbe is going to preface with one other point. Because seemingly, the question is, why is it that the Pesach in our Parsha wrote, Kol melocha lo don't do any work, and then needed, needed to explain the idea of Asiyas Melechas Oichel Nefesh that you're allowed to do for food. Seemingly, the Pesach should have just said, like by the other Yom Tovim, Kol Melechas Avoida, don't do any work of labor, and therefore you would understand that Melechas that are Melechas Hanoah, Melecha of enjoyment, are not part of the Isur Lechatchila. So the Rebbe says the explanation is like this. The Isur of Asiyas Melocha on Yom Tov is mentioned the first time in this week's Parsha. And therefore the Pesach says, doesn't say Kol Melechas Avoida Lo Yosobem. It doesn't say don't do any work of labor, which would have implied that the malacha of food was never part of the Isser. The Pasuk says, Kol malacha le'yosabam, which is teaching us that all malachas are Asur on Yom Tif. Again, this is the way we're learning, in the opinion of Beis Hillel, according to Tois, this is what we said, that these malachas are Asur on Yom Tif, technically. Then the Pasuk is giving us an allowance and saying, Ach asher ye'yachel, that which is used for food, you are allowed to do on Yom Tov, which means to say the Torah is now giving us a heter, a reason for how we're going to be allowed to do, or which malachas are we going to be allowed to do, if it's for the benefit of food. Later, when the Torah speaks again about Yom Tov and Parsha Samoyed and so on, the Torah just says, because now we can no longer make a mistake and think that the Malacha of Oichel Nefesh was never Asr L'Chadchila, because we know already from Parsha's boy that the Malachis were Asr, the Torah just gave us a heter. In other words, the way we understood the Ramban before was that the Malachis are not completely not part of the Isr. But now we see what? That in the first time the Torah is telling us the Isr of Asiyah's Malacha and Yom Tif, the Malachis are Asr on their own, it's just the Torah is giving us a special allowance for the sake of Oichel Nefesh, that we are allowed to do it. So now let's look at the Altar Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. The Altar Rebbe is speaking about the Isser of doing Malach and all Yom Toivim. So therefore he brings the Pasuk that says generally by all the Yom Toivim, a person does a Malach of labor, he gets Malchus because it says, And then the Altar Rebbe goes ahead and explains, what does it mean, Malach Savoida, anything that's not related to food and drink? That means... And these psukim are discussing only Malecha Savoida, and it does not tell us anything about Oichel Nefesh at all. So the Alter Rebbe is first giving us the general idea of how Malacha works. Then the Alter Rebbe goes ahead and discusses the idea of Oichel Nefesh, and gives us the source for that. And the Alter Rebbe tells us, but food and drink, Malacha that's done with food and drink, are called Malecha Oichel Nefesh, that the Torah, he tiro la soisa. That the Torah gave us an allowance to do it because it says Ach Hashem Yochal Chol Nefesh Hu Levadi Yosel Achem. Since it says Ach is clearly coming, in other words, the Torah is excluding something, taking something out of the klal of the Isur and just giving us an allowance. So therefore, in conclusion, what the Rebbe is saying is that the Al Rebbe is of the opinion that yes, the Melacha would have been originally part of the general Isur. and the Torah gave us an allowance for it. It's just in the beginning of the words of the Al Rebbe. The Al Rebbe was just giving us the general idea of how it's by all Yom Toivim that the that the Malacha that's Asur is the Malachas that are not part of Oichel Nefesh. The Rebbe concludes the Torah in Avodas Hashem from the ta- fact that the Torah gave us a heter for these Malachas. Again, Malachas that are on their own are Asur on Yom Tov, and the Torah gave us a special heter for the need of eating on Yom Tov. From this, we could see how absolutely important the union of Simchas Yom Tov is. In regards to Yom Toivim, as the Pasuk says, Moya de Musimcha. In other words, the Torah took something that's Asur and giving us a special heter in order to be able to have the Simcha. Says the Rebbe, a fascinating thing. We know that the Ha'ara of the Yom Toivim shines down throughout the year every single day. Based on this, that we said that Simcha is something so, so important, so crucial on Yom Tov, it's understood. That the simcha of Yom Tif needs to be felt all year round. That means to say, in addition to the fact that a person has to have simcha whenever he does any mitzvah, simcha shal mitzvah, there's also another aspect that the ha'ara of the Yom Toivim causes that you should feel this simcha, the simcha of Yom Tif, throughout the whole day, every single day.